nurse and I'm a magician, and I like what I do. I work with kids a lot. I'm a pediatric nurse, and uh, I also coach soccer sometimes. So I do work with kids a lot, and I like what I do at least most of the time. Um, now, it was, I was really excited this year for the program because I love the theme. Who knows what the theme is? Just say it. Don't raise your hand. Just say it. What's the theme for the summer reading program? Say it. Every hero has a story. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Every hero has a story. But you know what I also believe? I also believe every story has a hero. Right. And you all have a story. And so maybe you all could be heroes. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later, what I think a hero is. Now, um, this first trick I do for you guys, it tells you how I got started in magic. And that's why I like doing it first. So I hope you enjoy it as well. And it made me wonder, what was the first magic trick they'd ever done? Now, there's no proof of this, but I think it would have looked something like this. The magician would have said to the people in his or her own language, watch. The wave one hand over the other. Give it a little tap, just like that, and of course, it wouldn't have got a ball. It probably got maybe a rock, or a bone, or an acorn, or a seed, or a berry, or maybe a seashell. You see, they had to use something that the earth could give them because they couldn't run out to Walmart and buy something. They had to use what was available. But I think after the magician did this, he or she would have wanted to do more. And they would have said to the people in their own language, watch. They're taking that item, place it into their hand, give it a little tap, just like that, of course, it would uh, vanish. And to bring it back, well, that's simple. All you have to do is give it a tap, and it comes right back. Now, at some point in time, somebody picked up two sticks and started rubbing them together. Who knows what they got? Fire. fire. Is that something you guys can play with? No. no. You can hurt yourself if you play with fire. In fact, you can even hurt other people, so please don't do that. In fact, uh, Miss Susie told me this was a smart group. We're going to find out. What's the instructions? What are you supposed to do if you catch on fire? What's the instructions? Who knows? Just say it. Just say it. Stop, Stop dropping room. Now, I had a fireman came to my show a couple years ago. He said, they're adding a new instruction to that. It's going to be four things. Stop, drop, roll, and cover. So if the fireman comes to your school, because you come to the library, you're going to be ahead of everybody else. And you can tell them you know the four instructions now. But now think about it. Fire is an important discovery. You guys know why? Because I like my food cooked. But aside from that, think about it. If you woke up one cold winter morning, you could build a fire to what? To warm yourself. That's right. Also, back then, there's no electricity, no PlayStation, no Wii, no iPad, no iPod, none of that stuff. I mean, when the sun went down, that's it, bedtime. So these people had it pretty rough. But now they can take fire and put it on a stick. And for the first time, they could walk into a cave and see what's in there. Now, it doesn't sound like an impressive thing to us, but to these people, this was a huge deal. So now, when the people saw the fire on the stick, they were afraid of it. And that's mostly because they didn't understand it. But the magician saw this, and he or she said, hey, I want a magic stick too. And that's when the magic wand was created. So you see, it all ties together. So now the magician has a tool to work with, so he or she should be able to do just a little bit more. It would say to the people in their own language, watch. And hold the item in their hand. Push the stick in there, rub it through there a few times. That creates friction, which allows that little item to vanish. Now, bring it back to simple. I do create friction again, and it comes right back. Now, I'm going to do one more for you guys, and I want to be fair about this. I'm going to hold a little ball right here in my left hand. If I were to say to you guys, where's the little ball? And you'd say, Mr. David, it's in your left hand. That's very true, but if you give it just, uh, just a little tap, just like that, you can see it, uh, it vanishes. Now that's my impression of the world's first magic trick. I don't know that it's true or not, it's just what I think the first trick was. But I have to tell you guys that sometimes during my show, I have to pick, um, well, sometimes we call them volunteers. Sometimes we call them victims. But today we're gonna call them heroes. Now there's something you have to do to get selected to be a hero. And I'm going to tell you what it is. I don't pick you because you can raise your hand and say, oh, 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 pick me. I'll go by how big your smile is. And it helps if you brushed and flossed your teeth, too. Every time you say floss, somebody's hand goes down. All right. I mean, that's a tough thing to do. We have to do it. So, 
uh, watch closely. We're gonna, I'm looking for a, uh, a volunteer here. Let me see a hero looking around. And uh, yeah, look at the glasses. You have a nice smile. Come up here. Stand up. Watch your step. Don't step on anyone's fingers. We don't surprise them in a bad way. So if you're right here in this area, lift your fingers up off the floor. There you go. What's your name? Emily, stand right here. How old are you? Eleven. Eleven. Nice. So my little girl's eleven. Emily, I have here a deck of cards. I'm going to show them to you and everyone else. There's nothing strange or unusual about the deck of cards. You're the closest person to them. I want you to make sure of that. And you may see a name or two here or there in the cards. Uh, you'll see why in just a minute, Emily. Since we've seen the order, I'm going to change it. Let me get you to step back just a bit so these little people here can see. I'm going to change the order of the cards, Emily, by giving it a cut and a shuffle. Okay? Just going to change up the order of the cards, Emily. And what I'd like you to do is to reach into here and select one card. You have a free choice. You can pick any card that you want. Don't let me influence you. Any card at all. Don't let me see it. You didn't want this one. Hmm. All right. It's harder and harder, I'll tell you. All right, Emily, I'll tell you what. Something else I'm going to do. I'm going to hand you this pen. And I want you to sign your name on the front of your card. Not the back. The front. You can do it from left to right, right to left, top to bottom, bottom to top. You can do it on diagonal. You could make your name into a circle, a square, a triangle. Whatever you want to do makes the card extra special because it has your name on it. Emily, when you're finished, I want you to put the cap on the pen and put it into my pocket. I mean, into my hand. I'll put it in my pocket. Let me know when you finish. All right, very good. Emily, turn that card around and show it to everybody. Make sure this nice lady sees it because she signals me as to what the card is. You got it? Got it? Hmm. Emily, let me know when I can look. I want you to hold the card in such a way that I won't see it. Since I'm getting no help from my confederate over here, I can look. All right. Very good. Emily, put your card right there on top, face down. And I'm going to take it and move it out of the packet. Just like that. Now, it's right there on top. It has, uh, oh, someone else signed it with you. We have Sandra and Emily makes it double special. Another child signed this card, um, I don't know, yesterday or last week. So here we go. I'm going to push your card down. The five of hearts, Emily, goes right here on top, down even with the others. And then I will place it into this packet. Now, Emily, I'm going to turn my head. When I do, I would like you to push that card in even with the others as I turn my head. Go ahead. Got it? <laughs> Well, it says Sandra, it says Emily, it's the five of hearts. Is that your writing? Indeed, it must be your card. We're going to try something else if you don't mind. Watch closely. I'll put your card over here. Step over here with me, Emily. All the way over here. We're going to come far away from your card. Back up just a bit so these guys can see. There we go. Watch closely. Yours is the five of hearts. We're going to look at a different card. We're going to look at the four of spades. Look very different. They're close in number, but they look very different. Five of hearts, four of spades. You can say it. Five of hearts. Check it out. Watch closely. Sometimes they switch places. Yeah, it happens like magic. Want to see it happen again? Say go. Go on. Emily, go over there and get your card. The five of hearts. Turn around and show it to everybody. They'll be amazed to see it. Back on the table, right here. Pretty cool trick. How'd you do that? I know she's wondering what happened to my card. I'm going to show you. Check it out. I'll get it. You don't get hazardous pay. I get it. Check it out. Yeah, let's make sure that's it. Is that it? It says Emily. It's the five of hearts. Indeed, it must be her card. Back to your seat. Give her a big round of applause. Watch the fingers when you go back. Don't surprise everybody. Here we go. You guys ready? Yeah. Ella, you ready? You've done this before, right? You serious? You've done this before, right? 
Um, all right, we'll see if it works. Here we go. Hold them with both hands tight. Face everybody. Did you feel something? Did you feel something? All right, it must be working. Here we go again. Here we go. Did you feel it? No. All right, it's working. Here we go. We'll try it again. We'll do the flip this time, and you must have felt it that time. Did you feel it, Ellen? You did. How many cards? How many cards did you count to me just a moment ago? Ten. Count them again, one at a time, in a loud, clear voice. One, two. Three, four, five, seven, seven, wait a minute. How many did you count out to me? Let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, oh my gosh, they are heroes. Give them a big round of applause. Listen up, back in the seat, back in the seat, man. Be careful, watch the fingers on the way back. Don't surprise anybody. You cannot hear this. Cover up your, if you listen, sweetie, you got two more years before you're a grown up. All the grown ups cover up their ears. Kids, you have to listen because I have to go off the microphone. He's not real. He's just a puppet. Don't say anything to the grown-ups because they think he's real and we're going to trick them with a story. It's a story where Rocky gets hurt, but of course he cannot get hurt because he's only a puppet. You guys promise not to say anything? No. All right, you're going to trick the grown-ups. Here we go. Okay, grown-ups, you can listen now. Now, when I was a little boy, I used to have a pet raccoon just like this, and one day I took him and I squished him up into a little ball. It's okay, he's a stunt raccoon, he's a contortionist. I stuck him in my backpack and off to school I went. Now I got to school, I was too busy studying and taking tests. I did not have a chance to play with him. But then we got that break where we go to that big room to eat the uh, cafeteria, thank you, yes. And halfway through the meal, up comes Rocky. Oh, he started looking around, checking all my friends out in the place. So I decided I'd feed him right off my plate. I gave him some shrimp. Mmm, no, 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 he loves shrimp. Oh, I gave him some salad. Oh, he loves salad. And I gave him some corn. Oh, he loves to eat corn. But his favorite thing to eat, the thing that he likes to eat the most, is ice. Rocky, Rocky, that's enough. Rocky. So I'm sitting there feeding the raccoon. All my friends are laughing and laughing. So the next thing you know, the principal comes over. You know the lady in charge? She walks over to my, ta my table and she says, <coughs> Excuse me there, little boy, but you cannot have a live animal here in the cafeteria. Really? No live animals, huh? No problem, check it out. <laughs> oh, we'll bring them up to biology. <laughs> No, look, he's okay. See, I told you I was a nurse. CPR, he's right back up. He is a stunt rat. Don't do that, Robbie. Let me put him away. Everybody say bye-bye, Robbie.